What's going on everybody? It's your favorite YouTuber Austin Holloman here in Madrid, Spain. And today, well first of all, if you guys have not already, get a video like and subscribe. And let's get into the topic. The topic of today is going to be something that you guys have been watching me do since I left the United States. And the topic is going to be about the downside to being exposed to too many beautiful women or to being exposed to beautiful women in general. You guys have heard me talk about this, but today I will cover this in a thorough manner. Now, <clears throat> a lot of guys think that that's absurd to think that it's bad and so, or there's any negatives to being exposed to women that you're highly attracted to. And that's because most of my audience in the United States where <laughs> getting a six, it seems like a blessing. And that's, I'm not even exaggerating. Even for a guy that looks like myself, that takes care of myself and dresses the way I do and have the status, uh, it, even obtaining a six somewhere in Texas is a fucking miracle. Like it's it's asking for too much. Almost it's almost asking for too much. Now, the reason why I decided to go on this journey around the world to live abroad, and of course I'm single as I do it, so I date women in pretty much every city I go to, as I should. The reason I did that was because when I was in the United States, when I was in Dallas, Texas, I was very doing very well for myself, right? I had my own barber shop. At one point, I had two barber shops. I did not have three. I don't know why people say that, but I had two barber shops, and I was making over ten grand a month cutting hair on alone, plus the other commission I was getting from the other barber shop. And I did this thinking, like, uh, you know, I, I had I didn't really have a problem getting women and girls in high school or. And it's, I started noticing a little bit of college and when I dropped out of college, got a little better. And then I was like, well, you know what? You know, common sense as a man, you need to improve your finances and improve your looks and, you know, work on yourself. Uh, the only thing about it is I noticed in the United States, it's an endless self journey, meaning that which you should always improve yourself. I like, for example, recently I got this haircut. I think I look better with this haircut now. That's a form of self improvement. That's some, there, maybe one day I think I look better. You never know. But the thing is, your ROI living in Texas is ridiculously low. Or we can say the states in general because I'm not the only guy that feels like this. But the ROI that you have is so low, it starts to feel like, okay, what, is, what am I actually getting out of putting all this work in on myself? So I was like, you know, I'm going to switch everything, go to a whole other country. And I went to Brazil. And the work I had done on myself was being appreciated, being recognized, and I was getting the results that I should have gotten, if not better, that entire time I was living in Texas. When I come back to Texas, the chicks that I'm sleeping with, <laughs> I mean, every now and then I would get a chick that was like attractive, yeah, but, uh, or at least let's say above average, but it was usually like average or just the phone call before the lotion. For you, for you guys that don't know what I mean when I say that, meaning that this is the chick that you call right before you're about to jack off. Like, if she don't answer the phone, fuck it, I'm about to do it myself. Yeah. A guy that looks like me had to deal with that. So I can only imagine with somebody, that's why I tell you guys to get in shape and, and actually, and you do need to work on yourself. Because if I was going through that, if you're fat and out of shape and you ain't been taking care of your teeth and cutting your hair, I know you shit out of luck. So... When I experienced that, I said, you know what, I'm going to go to Brazil. And then I had an issue in Brazil, which caused me, I wanted to travel the world anyway, but I had an issue in Brazil that made me leave, or I didn't have to, but I chose to leave. And I was like, you know, I'm going to try as much as I can now. I'm going I'm to figure out what everything is about. So I went to four countries in Asia. Now I'm at four countries in Europe. I've been to seven countries in Africa. I believe I've been to eight countries in Latin America. And I've been to about 44 or 45 cities all around the world. Pretty much the only place I haven't been to is, is um, Australia. And I did this by creating a remote income and by keeping an open mind and by what you see me on now, which is YouTube, which is primarily what funded this entire trip and people like you that have been watching that have been donating uh, has made this journey a lot easier. I was traveling before I got donations, but because of you guys, donating has became a lot easier. If you guys want to know 
how you can date abroad, live abroad, obtain visas, and you want to know more information about getting remote income, I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program and you can email me at austinholliman at gmail. The landing page is still in the construction, but it is available for you guys to sign up for. Actually, there's a booking link that I'll put below that you can sign up, pick a time. And guys, this is a high ticket item. If you don't have, uh, if you're not financially ready to invest, I forgot to mention that, invest, date, and obtain visas in these other countries, those three are not gonna be for you. But if you're looking for remote income, I can't help you with that. So if you have no money, yes, we can talk about that. But those other three that I just mentioned, don't bother with those because it doesn't matter dating abroad if you don't have the money to get over there in the first place. But I can help you with all of those. So click the link below and book today. And let's get continue on with the video. Now, I said I did that using my remote income on YouTube. And what I would do is I would go places where I could stay for extended periods of time, like Brazil. I stayed in Brazil three months. You can stay up to six months at this time of the video is being made. I went to Thailand. You can only stay 45 days. When I went now, I believe it's 30, you know, and but I'm not really into Asian women like that anyway. So I wasn't too interested. I, I was never going to overstay my visa in Thailand. Like I, it, I would, I would because I love the city, but I would not overstay because of like, oh, like I'm having such a fun time dating. Like I was actually dating other foreigners. And yes, I, I smashed plenty of Thai chicks while I was there. I, well, many of them. But um, that fantasy fetish eventually ran out. That's it, for me, that's what they just were was a fantasy fetish. So I got exposed to my favorites, uh, which were the Brazilians. And then I went to Vietnam, Cambodia, Philippines. I was I didn't like I didn't even go on one date in the Philippines. I'm really not interested. You know, that doesn't mean I won't do it. Yeah, I won't date Asian women, but I'm just not they're I, like I'm not losing one hour of sleep not going on a date in the Philippines. Like I don't care. But I got exposed to that. Then I got exposed to the African women. And I was like, wow, I really like how the Kenyan women behave. I like how the Tanzanian women look and behave. Same with the Kenyan women. I like how they look. I mean, who can go to Africa and not be satisfied with uh, black women that are extremely friendly and that are beautiful? And everybody got ass. I mean, you cannot go over there and not notice how well-fed those women are. Just saying. Uh, but yeah, I did that. I went all around South America. I've recently came here to uh, Spain. I've been exposed to that. We'll get more into that later on in the video. I've been to Portugal. I've been to Romania. I've been to Poland. And guys, I don't regret any of this. And we got a lot of haters. We got so many haters that say Austin is struggling dating abroad. Listen, the amount of experiences I've had, you if I could write this all in the book, you would think I was 60 years old. So I've enjoyed life a lot now. And I, I will look back. I don't give a damn if I go broke. God forbid. That's not the plan. But if I went broke, I would not regret anything. I've lived my life. I could die today. God forbid. And I would not regret anything. And this is, I really think you, I really think young men should do this. Like if you are a young man, by the way, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching on YouTube, and you guys want to learn how I built remote income and you want my strategy to gaining subscribers and how to monetize of subscribers and all that kind of stuff and how to, even without donations, how to create videos that generate you money so you can at least make $100 a day. By the way, $100 a day is $500 in Brazil and it spins like that. For example, you can live in the nicest part of town in uh, Salvador Bahia you know, which is like Northeast Brazil, somewhere around that area, Eastern Brazil, let's say, right? For $500, you can literally live close enough to the point where you could smell the fucking beach. And uh, multiply that by five, $2,500 wouldn't even get you that in Miami. So you actually getting a lot more bang for your buck. So why would you not do this? Besides the women, why would you not do this? But I keep getting exposed uh, to all these different types of women. Like I mentioned, I mentioned the Kenyan women. Uh, that was in 2023. By the time I got to South America and I experienced like, oh, like I didn't even, you know, Uruguay is a country that a lot of people don't go to, you know, or people know about in general. I was like, oh, shit, I didn't know they had these beautiful mestizas and white girls here. 
And I went to Paraguay. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that this was here. Wow, I didn't know Chile. Like, I didn't really know much about Chile. But it, holy shit, like, these women are classy. Uh, they're beautiful. They got a lot of Venezuelans down here. Then I went to Lima in uh, Bolivia. And those women aren't the most beautiful. But, I mean, honestly, if we want to talk about, you know, them being nice in the... In, they, they, the quality of the box, there's some baby makers, you know, just to keep it blunt with you guys. I, I, I don't know. You know, I've been all over, you know, I've been to three cities in Colombia. I, I, can't, I can't describe the stuff I've seen. I haven't even talked about all of it on camera. And now I started to reach a point where I'm like, okay, I'm tired of going to new cities and meeting women. Like, I'm tired of resetting. It's not that I, you know, can't, I'm not succeeding when I go to these places. I'm just on a journey to just find out more, keep moving, find out more. Some places I like and I don't, I stay longer than 10 days. Like, for example, I stayed in, you know, Brazil a total of four months, almost five months, you know, since I first visited. I stayed in Nairobi about four months. I stayed in Tanzania five weeks. Some places I do just sit there. But then I always have a back of my head, man, what am I missing out on? What am I missing out on? Am I missing out on something? So I'm traveling to get this shit out of the way. Like right now, I'm about to do a bunch of countries in Europe. I'm trying to get it out of the way. Because I won't have peace in my mind until I at least see this stuff. Get it out of the way. Go back. I'm ready. For, I'm, I'm kind of just ready for this shit to just speed past. So I can just go somewhere and stay for a year. But I say that, right? I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to just stay with one chick. Like, I have a chick in Sao Paulo that I really like. And I'm like, man, I just, I would just like to go back there with her and just stay. But then I arrive in Spain and I'm seeing women with, you know, a little a skin tone, maybe about mine or a little lighter, with curly afros and green eyes and tight waist. And I'm like, I have to stop traveling. Because every time I go somewhere new, I'm like, okay, now I have to reset. So now I'm thinking about the next, okay, well, what is Germany going to look like? You know, now I'm, I'm so exposed to so much. It's a good thing. You can see I'm smiling, right? It's a good thing, but it's, it, it has its negative. It's a very good problem. It's one of those situations where it's a problem. But would I rather be you in the States, you know, probably about to blow your fucking brains out because you can't get a date? Or would I rather be Austin that's having a problem of not knowing where to settle down because he's had too much? I'd rather be the guy that has the abundance. I'd rather you have this problem than being at home wanting to blow your brains out. I would. Okay? Now, I've been exposed to so many now that I'm just starting to walk right past them. I see a beautiful chick, oh, you know. You guys see me on live streams. I walk past and I'm, you know, I'm walking past beautiful. Austin, awesome. stop her. No. I'm at a point where I'm like, nah, you know, they have to show me some level of like that they find me attractive. Like I, I've done too much. I've done too much to chase behind them, you know, and I can, I can tell how many of my subscribers don't actually know how to deal with women because they don't know how to vet who they should and should not waste their time with. And that's why I said you guys should listen to me. You guys should listen to me for all your advice. You guys should listen to me for your dating advice, for your visa advice, for your financial advice, your driving advice, your child planning advice. You should listen to me for everything. Because I know what I'm talking about. And you know what? If I don't know what I'm talking about, you won't be listening to me. Because I won't say shit. I don't speak when I don't know things. So anyway, I'm just starting to walk right past them. And now I almost don't know what I want. What I'm going to have to do is make a commitment to someone and uh, let my, I guess you could say, my, my morality keep me there and just be satisfied and invest so much, make that person so emotionally invested where I would not want to, I'm not going to want to break their heart <laughs> because... I just, I just, I'm just honest, man. Whenever I travel, I just tell them like, hey, whenever I go over here, you know what I'm about to do. Doesn't mean uh, I don't like you, but I mean, I put the shit out publicly so people know what they're getting into. But they still like me, so it must not be that big of an issue. 
Now, the downside to resetting, <clears throat> if you guys want to live this lifestyle that I'm living, it is very exhausting. <clears throat> it's very exhausting. I can honestly say I'm in Europe right now, and I want to leave. Not that I don't like it. It's because I'll be in France, you know, next week, and I'm like, I got to start over again. I got to go to a, <clears throat> a new dating scene where the women behave differently. Uh, I don't know what, if they have any racial issues, any self I don't know. I got to find that stuff out, and I got to start over again. That is extremely exhausting on your mental. But I'd rather do what I'm doing now and say that, hey, I've covered 40 countries and I have a better view of the world versus some guy uh, sitting around, thinks he knows everything about one country and he's only been to one city in that fucking country. You know, versus me, my arguments on how I view certain countries of the world are a lot more valid because I've been to, for, let's say, for example, Kenya. I've been to three cities in Kenya. You know, I've been to five Six cities in Brazil, if you want to include the city that I was at for two days, uh, which is supposed to go as soon. I've been to six cities there. You know, I've been to two cities in Paraguay. Like, I don't base my judgments out of places I've been to one, you know, one city. Unless if that's the only thing you need to see. Like, Peru, I think outside of Lima, there's, that's it. You know, I don't think you need to, I don't... When we talk about dating, I don't think there's really much else you need to see. Now, if you want to go to Cusco to see... Um, Machu Picchu, then yes. So there is a downside to living this lifestyle resetting. If you if you guys wanted my advice, if you're not mentally strong enough and you don't have uh, control over your emotions like I do, don't do what I'm doing. Go to one city and stay there per year. You know, one one go to move to one new city per year. You'll get a lot better feel of the city and. But the only thing is, you'll have a hard time leaving. Like, I don't have a hard time leaving because I've pretty much, I've done it so much that I've mastered being able to detach and just let go of certain things. I don't want to do that, but I have to. Um, just because of my content. Like, I, it, without me being a YouTuber, yes, I probably would stay in these places a few weeks longer, but I would still keep traveling the way how I do. Especially when I know this bullshit. I'm getting off topic, though. So it's not that bad of a problem. Most of you guys would rather have my problem that I'm going through. What is the solution? There is no solution. The only solution is to go to where you want to be and stick with beautiful women there and find one. But whenever you start, there's, I mean, there's a positive side, right? Whenever you start to get exposed to a lot of beautiful women, you become less thirsty. Like, I look at how some dudes sent behind some of these chicks, and this is why you this is why you need to do this. For example, you guys remember there was a woman in Rwanda uh, that after we parted, she went on there and kind of tried to... I don't know if she was trying to clout chase or whatever she did. She wasn't that successful at it. Wasn't successful at too many things as well. But she tried to, like, get online and, like, slander me. And before that, I was with her daily at the time. So I knew, like, what was really going on and what I was dealing with. But these dudes are leaving comments like, you need to marry her. That's a 10. Keep her. What the fuck are you talking about? You don't even know her. But the thing is, dudes in these other countries where beautiful women are more reasonable to get, it's not a, because uh, getting a beautiful chick in the States seems like you might as well try to become a doctor. Or you might be, you might have a better chance of becoming a doctor. But getting beautiful women in these other countries is a lot easier. So they don't value them the way that we do. Just like I seen the chick with the green eyes and the curly fro and the brown skin like this and a nice body. Wherever she grows up at, there's probably many, many more of her. So dudes don't get, they go, oh, it's just another chick with green eyes. Like, yeah, she's pretty, but like, who cares? You know, that's how they look at it. That's how I look at it now. You know, but... When you're coming from the States where you probably don't see it as much and they're not friendly to you, you do just, uh, that's why y'all be getting used up, green carded, uh, because you guys don't, <laughs> you guys aren't used to it. So in my opinion, you need to expose yourself, but the downsides to exposing yourself is eventually you won't know what you want. 
Uh, if you're looking for a wife, you might forget about that. You know, you might just be over. Like if you move to Brazil and you're looking for a girlfriend, it's going to take a long time. And you're going to go through a lot of women just because you can. So you're probably going to break a lot of hearts along the way. And you might walk past opportunities. And honestly, you might end up just being a player for life. people that disagree with what I just said, they haven't done what I've done. The majority of people that critique me have not been to 45 cities in two years. So they don't know what they're talking about. I'm your only friend. I know what I'm talking about. Now, if you guys would like to join a community of men that are interested in doing what I'm doing, I have a subscription service where you can join. I will give you the blueprint on how to do exactly what I'm doing. And we would join a community where you can bond with like-minded people who are interested in the same thing as you as well. The sign up today will be linked down below as well and you will be the first to know. But the other thing that I described was more of a let me help you do these things one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you are interested in either one of the services, they will be in the first pinned comments and in the description below.